beeswax, women's stays, slates, snuffers and snuff pans. This order from London appears complete, despite a six month wait on delivery. Hey, did you learn when the West Indies cargo will arrive? The ship Valiant. It is expected to arrive with the tide Tuesday next, sir. Very well. And there will be the rum, sugar and coffee the taverns are in need of. <laughs> Ashby, for your trouble, man. I will see you again after Tuesday's tide. Indeed you will, sir. See here, Lazarus. Your master tip me of things, corn. Not Spanish. Two shillings, no less. The best ready money. My master sows as he reaps. True enough. Will we rest after moving this below, Simon? It's getting late. We will rest after the goods are inventoried and shelved in the shop, Charles. Not before. Master's eager for ready money. Ain't we all? <laughs> Just arrived. A fine assortment of goods to be sold for ready money. Ready money. That's cash to you and me. Coins and paper currency. In the 18th century, that would be pounds, shillings, and pence. The equivalent of dollars and cents. Hi, I'm Adam Kennedy. And I'm Carolyn Duke, and today we are going to see how Virginia's tobacco economy, along with the shortage of English currency, combined to create a system of doing business that was based on credit. Just like credit cards today, credit in the 18th century was used to pay debts, make purchases, and build a good reputation. If your credit was good, your word was good, you were trustworthy. Something no amount of ready money could buy. I have an account with Mr. Greenhow, and I'm bound there now to present him with a bill of exchange drawn on my account in London. I'll have him transfer one pound, 15 shillings from my account to your account as payment in full for this order. Greenhouse store, you say? Couldn't be better as my wife has need of a new cook button. I might see what Mr. Greenhow has by way of brass buckles as well. We're concluded, sir. And with much satisfaction, I assure you. Does he always try to catch you out like that? He's not trying to catch me out, as you say, Charles, but only to be certain I've done the work properly. Even the best managed business is bound for ruin if the books are not kept in order. Besides, I wouldn't worry much about the books if I were you, Charles. Yeah. You've only been here three weeks. It will be some time before Master Greenhow places his account books in your care. A bill of exchange, is it? Properly drawn in your account with John Norton and Sons in London. And if you'd be so kind as to endorse it to me, sir, the credit will be entered in my books. Simon. And I would transfer one pound, 15 shillings to Mr. Craig's account directly for a handsome trunk I just purchased. Oh, very well. Good day, Mr. Tyson. Oh, good day to you, Simon. Who's the boy? Oh, that's Charles, sir. The new apprentice placed by the vestry. I never heard the church had given you a new apprentice, John. An orphan? Aye, his mother and father died of consumption. Oh, Tis a pity for the land. Yes, <clears throat> I'm to court tomorrow to become his legal guardian. Uh, Mr. Tyson would have one pound 15 shillings drawn from his account to be credited to Mr. Craig, with the remainder to be placed upon his own account. Very well, sir. If you have a moment, Mr. Tyson, I have some ironware that has just arrived. You might find it of interest. Oh. So, what's this? A bill of exchange. John Norton and Sons is in London, and Mr. Tyson sent him some hogsheads of tobacco. When Mr. Norton sold the tobacco, he wrote a letter telling Mr. Tyson how much money he made from the sale although the actual money is in England. This bill is drawn on that account. Now Mr. Tyson has endorsed the bill to Master Greenhow. Mr. Tyson gets to use the credit to buy things in the store, and the money now belongs to Master Greenhow. But there is no ready money here. True, but Master Greenhow can use the credit just like money to do his business. He could send this bill to Great Britain to pay for the goods he orders for his store. And if he went to England, he could take this bill to Mr. Norton and exchange it for cash. Why don't the English merchants just send over the money? They're not allowed to. It's illegal for them to export British currency. Parliament wants the money, well, the gold and silver, which is what money's value comes from, to stay in England. <laughs> well said, Mr. Tyson, well said. <laughs> Farewell, Greenhouse. Oh, good day to you, Mr. Tyson. My dear Mrs. Wilson, please accept this fresh harvest of Dutch brown and capuchin lettuce from my garden as a token of appreciation for your kindness during Mr. Witt's recent affliction. <laughs> With sincere good wishes. <laughs> Very appropriate, my dear. Her apple pie may surely be credited for my recovery. Ben, 
Do you wait? Master Will. Deliver this basket to Mrs. Wilson. It needs no explanation. Yes, sir. Your mistress is most gracious. Do convey my appreciation for her thoughtfulness. I will, mistress. For your trouble, Ben. You're most generous, ma'am. Lucy, take this to the kitchen. I will wait for you here. Well done, lad. Your bookkeeping is tidy and precise. It will serve us both well. Thank you, sir. So where is it then, Simon? What? All the money. All day long, you and Master Greenhow write in those books, and customers come and go, and yet we've seen less than three shillings in real money. So where's the money? It's here, Charles, in the books. It's credit, which is just as good as money, if a man is honest. Ahem. <clears throat> Hello, Ben. What will you have? I like a shilling's worth of green ribbon, if this is good for it. I believe it used to be a full piece of eight. <laughs> Charles, bring the scales. Here's ready money at last. I'm instructing Charles on currency and credit. Important to know. What kind of money is that supposed to be? It's one piece cut from a piece of eight, which is a Spanish dollar. It's made of silver, so we wait to see how much it is worth. Remember, the silver gives the coin its value, even after it's been chopped up like this one. It doesn't matter what it's called or where it's from. What matters is what it weighs. This has been shaved and clipped from every direction, Ben. Tis worth but one shilling threepence. Then I'll have that much ribbon for my wife. Have you finished with the sweeping, Charles? No, sir. It is a shame you lost near half your tobacco crop, Mr. Jones. But you should not blame yourself. Aye, if my new daughter had waited but one more day to be born, then my newly cut tobacco would not have been pummeled and destroyed by heavy rains. Hmm, 500 pounds tobacco. John Jones, this day of... By my hand, Ronald Tyson. This transfer note should serve you, Mr. Jones. Tis not the crop note you hoped for, but... Aye, ah, it is the first year I've not filled a single hogshead of tobacco. And the first year you have a daughter, don't forget. What's she called? Rebecca. Ah, Rebecca. <laughs> tis a fine name, Mr. Jones. Aye, tis. Is this Mr. Murdoch's account? It is, sir. He is further in arrears than I realized. Should Mr. Murdoch request further credit, tell him he must speak with me. Understood? Understood, sir. Yes, sir. <sighs> Simon, what is arrears? It means that debt is overdue. What is debt? Come have a look. Debt is the money you owe, and credit is the money owed to you. See here. Mr. Tyson bought us a bill of exchange, remember? Yes, I remember. I entered its full amount, minus the money Mr. Tyson owed Mr. Craig. Yes. What remains is the credit owed Mr. Tyson, which is five pounds. So Mr. Tyson can purchase goods from Master Greenhow totaling up to five pounds, and we just move the money from the credit column to the debt column. That is a great deal of ciphering, Simon. It is, and that is why Master Greenhow keeps so many different books. We keep a waste book to make a note of the sales and exchanges that take place each day. See here, this lists yesterday's customers in the order they came in and what their purchases were. This information is later transferred to the day book or journal. So when you do the ledger, you just move people's purchases from the day book to their individual account page? Exactly. And that is how Master Greenhow knows how much credit his customers have remaining. And he also knows if they are in arrears. Just so, Charles. Just so. Good day, Mr. Jones, and well met. How fare your wife and son? My wife and son fare well, sir, as does my new infant daughter. 
And I must offer you my congratulations, sir. And that would be a crop note for this year's harvest? Uh, would that it were. I fear it is but a transfer note this season, sir. I was unable to fill a single hogshead of tobacco. Oh, I'm sorry to hear of it, sir. And what do you offer for 500 pounds worth of tobacco? Cash, is it? I can give you 10 shillings per hundredweight. Uh, then I must take my business to Mr. Prentice, sir. He offers two shillings more. In cash? So he told me, sir. Oh, he must have more ready money available than I, then. I could do better, Mr. Jones, if you are willing to accept payment as credit on my books. By midwinter, I should be in a position to convert a percentage of that credit into cash. In the meanwhile, I believe I have everything available in stock that your family might be in need of. How much do you offer if I accept? Thirteen shillings per hundredweight. Thirteen? Rest assured, I may not be able to be so generous tomorrow. Done, Mr. Greenhow. <laughs> You will find my three hogsheads are all properly numbered and stamped with my mark. <laughs> this crop note is a comfort to hold, sir, believe me. I've worried myself sick over this crop ever since the seedlings went into their hills. Too much rain, too much sun, neglectful field hands, and tobacco worms. <laughs> Do you have any idea what plagues tobacco lays prey to? Yes, I do, Mr. Abercrombie. Tobacco's my business. Tobacco may be your business, but it is my blood. Yes. I will see you next year, Mr. Tyson. <laughs> Farewell, Mr. Abercrombie. Jones, is it? It is, sir. How may I be of service? Uh, what return did Mr. Greenhow offer on your tobacco notes? Uh, for cash, he offered ten shillings on the hundred. Ten shillings? Is he mad? Ten shillings for my year's labor? <laughs> Could a man receive greater insult? Your crop note, it was properly endorsed? I had but a transfer note, sir. Oh, well. That explains the ten shillings then, doesn't it? <laughs> With only a transfer note, you had little room to negotiate. I, on the other hand, have crop notes, sir. <laughs> I dare say I will gain satisfaction. Uh, uh, Mr. Greenhow, uh, uh, to business. If you wish to do business with me, sir, I must inform you my price is firm. But he... Ten shillings on the hundredweight, take it or leave it. How dare you, sir? I shall be within, should that exchange be to your satisfaction. But I... I... If not, I suggest you take your business elsewhere. But I... He... I... Ten shillings. I hear Mr. Prentice offers more, sir. He does? Well, then. I shall take my business to Mr. Prentice! Ah! Good day. What was that man going on about, Simon? Aren't crop notes and transfer notes the same thing? Yes and no, Charles. They are both tobacco notes, but a crop note is issued for a full hogshead of tobacco. When you buy that note, you purchase a specific hogshead with that player's mark upon it. You are given a transfer note if you do not have enough tobacco for a full hogshead. That tobacco cannot be traced, as it will be mixed with other planters' tobacco to fill hogsheads for shipment. It is rather complicated, isn't it, Simon? Aye, it is. It is true that Anne Sparks, a Negro woman, cannot testify in this court, regardless of the fact that she is also a free woman. The evidence of Robert Bowright's debt is presented here not by Ann Sparks, but by her account book, her ledger. In all other instances, her ledger has proved to be an accurate and well-kept account of her business dealings. There is no reason to believe otherwise in regard to the account of Mr. Bowright. Mr. Bowright contracted by verbal agreement to pay one pound four shillings for the making of one dozen shirts. Anne Sparks delivered those shirts on the agreed upon date and has yet to see payment nearly six months after the contract was entered into. I encourage you 
most respectfully, to hold Mr. Bowright responsible for this debt. We agree, Mr. Hubbard, and so find Robert Bowright liable for the debt owed to Ann Sparks and order him to make payment. What's next? Uh, legal guardianship sought by John Greenhow, merchant for Charles Cromwell, infant. Call him. The court calls John Who Greenhow to come Your Honor. forth and be Both heard. Both parents dead and no other relatives. He's been placed with Mr. Greenhow to begin apprenticeship. Mr. Greenhow initiated the action for guardianship. Mr. Greenhow, you seek guardianship of this boy, Charles Cromwell? I do, Your Honor. You are aware of your responsibilities to provide for him in all matters? I am, sir. Very well, then the court orders John Greenhow, merchant, be appointed legal guardian of Charles Cromwell, infant. Thank you, Your Honor. What's next? Petition for the renewal of a tavern license brought by James. This might be the very opportunity I've been seeking. To be sold to the highest bidder. 200 acres in Amelia County. 40 cleared for planting. Do you intend we should move to Amelia County, Master Greenhow? No, no, lad. Mrs. Greenhow would never agree to that. I seek investment only. I'll buy a little property, put it in good repair. Then in a year or so, the land nearby becomes more scarce. I can resell it for a tidy profit. That sounds a good scheme, sir. <laughs> yes, indeed it does. Sold to Mr. Jellycones for three pounds four shillings, a handsome riding chair, and harness. If you, sir, would settle Mr. Crenshaw, next, sir, we have land in Amelia County, 200 acres partially cleared with a Listen modest up, house. Listen up, lads. Is this it, sir? Bid, Charles. Gentlemen, Good luck to you, sir. Pounds. I'll open, sir. To Mr. Greenhow. Who will raise it to 35? Here, sir. Oh, Mr. Williamson, I did not see you. The bid goes to Mr. Williamson. 37 pounds 10. To Mr. Greenhow. 40 pounds. The bid is against you, Mr. Greenhow. Does Master Greenhow have enough money, Simon? It's Ooh, all credit, Charles, remember? 44. And Master Greenhow has the best Again, credit in town. 48 pounds. Do you yield, Mr. Williamson? The bid goes to Mr. Greenhow for 48 pounds. Going? I'll make the raise. At That's Mr. Murdoch. Pounds. His credit Mr. is Murdoch, bad. Mr. Murdoch, with due respect, do you have someone to stand for your securities for such a bid? My security, sir? What are you implying? If no one will guarantee your bid, sir, I will not accept it. This is an outrage! Perhaps you have ready money, Mr. Murdoch? Of course not. <laughs> Last bid to Mr. Greenhow for 48 pounds. Going once, gentlemen. Again, final bid sold to Mr. Greenhow. There's Sally Pelham, the jailer's daughter. Isn't she a plum? Plum? Good day, Sally. Hello, Simon. Who's this? I'm Charles Cromwell. Honored to meet you, Charles. Oh, what's that you've brought? Just for your father. Is he here? He's with the counterfeiters. Counterfeiters? Oh yes, had you not heard? They were arrested Thursday and will be held here in the jail until the general court sits next month. What are counterfeiters? They make illegal money, forgeries, and that is against the law. Only the House of Burgesses can authorize the issuance of paper currency. My father says the counterfeiters are just thieves. They fool you by being cordial, and then they give you fake money. It's only later you learn you've been robbed. Cordial? Yes, friendly, you know. Well, I don't think stealing is very friendly. Nor do I, Charles. It is downright unfriendly if you ask me. Do you want to see them? Can we? Are you serious? We'll make a pretense of looking for Father to deliver your package. He's been in with them all morning. I'm sure he won't suspect. Come on. Were you scared? To be honest, I was a little at the beginning. But once I got a good look at them, I wasn't afraid anymore. Truly? Truly, Lazarus. Sally was right. They looked just like anybody you might see in church on Sunday. And the big one said, so, who are you? He thought it was Mr. Pelham's son or something. <laughs> Did he say it meanly as, who are you? <laughs> no, he just said it in a common way. Just, who are you? 
So you seen real live criminals right there in that jail? I did. My, my. I've never seen the inside of a jail, Master Charles, let alone had a conversation with a criminal. I tell you, you're living a pretty full life for an orphan boy. I suppose I am. Ah, Charles, I've decided to inspect my new property in Amelia County and would like you to accompany me. Thank you, sir. Simon, we shall be gone the full week. I leave the shop in your care. I will not disappoint you, sir. I'm certain of it. Simon is very good with the books, sir. And that is what matters, is it not? The books and the credit. <laughs> Simon, we have another shopkeeper in the making here. Wouldn't you agree? Yes, sir. I would. <laughs>